Hello and welcome to another episode of My Arundel Biz Podcast, powered by Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation. Whew. <laughs> I'm your host, Grayson Orfe. And I'm Steve Adams, uh, your co-host and marketing and outreach manager at AAEDC. And uh, diving right in today, I'm pleased to introduce today's guest, Josh DiBartolo. He's a the COO of Purview, and I'll go to the script here. Uh, Purview is a software-driven healthcare company seeking to increase health equity, connect more people to better care, and improve health outcomes by providing a way to securely organize, share, and access remote medical records for diagnosis or treatment. So there you go. That's another another mouthful, um, obviously showing how much Purview seeks to do in the uh, in the space. So, Josh, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me today. And thank you also to just the Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation for everything you do and that you've done for our company and others in the area. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Josh, just wanted to know, um, give us a little bit of background on Purview and uh, uh, and also how has it grown? Sure. And this uh, should give us a chance to unpack that uh, introduction that Steve gave there. So, yeah. uh, so Purview started uh, about a dozen years ago um, out of uh, the, the CTO and the CMO over at Chesapeake Medical Imaging, another Anne Arundel County um, business here. They they realized that there were some solutions and some technologies that weren't in the market that they needed, and they decided to go ahead and build them themselves. And so they built them out for their practice and then started seeing, hey, some other organizations that they were friendly with needed some, some similar solutions, and they started saying, we might have a company here. So they, they started by building out what's known as a risk system, as well as some managed services. Um, that company caught the attention of another large company called Force 3. It, it acquired the company at that moment, um, ran it for a couple of years, and then spun it out um, under a new structure as a SaaS company, as a software, as a service company, under the leadership now of CEO Les Trackman, who's uh, Purview's current CEO today. And um, at that moment, we're up to about 2016, um, the idea was to really uh, promote the subscription model, which was starting to take hold in in other things. Netflix made this model very popular where mm -hmm. you create a software and rather than load a local version, you have it cloud hosted. And so this was back in some of the early days of cloud hosting software and the healthcare world uh, was still in its infancy on adopting a lot of solutions like this. So where we started um, was in the management of medical imaging data. And this is about the time that I came on right in 2016. And the idea was to be able to create a platform that you could manage medical imaging data. And when I say medical imaging, I mean an X-ray, a CT scan, an MRI. Um, you get one of those scans, they're big, they're bulky. How do you navigate? How do you manage those things? How do you share them with a doctor that might be in a different location where the scan was created? And so mm -hmm. we created a platform really focusing on the sharing access and mobility of medical imaging. And what we started hearing as we went over the next few years was, hey, that's great. There's also some of these additional imaging or uh, other medical record types that we need access to. Things like digital pathology, EHR extracts, lab reports. Could you create a platform basically that could do all of those things, put all of those things in one? And so we developed at that point um, what was it, the infancy of, of our remote second opinion software. It was at that point case management driven where basically you could create a case of anything uh, directly around a specific diagnosis that you wanted to get a second opinion or another review or read on it. And uh, we started getting a lot of um, interest in this product and then um, COVID happened. And so basically telehealth advanced probably 10 or 20 years in people's adoption um, from a telehealth 
uh, standpoint, a lot of people were still in the, the dark ages of using um, physical CDs and even physical film and slide for review. But a lot of this just by force of nature had to happen. Things got escalated and we started seeing a big ramp up in demand for our services and our product. And that, that kind of leads us into where we are today, where we have really the premier remote second opinion platform. And we're running the remote second opinion programs now for many top hospitals, including um, three of the 10 top children's hospitals, as well as numerous top cancer hospitals and orthopedic and other, other facilities as well. So I'll stop there and uh, turn it back to you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, um, yeah. and that's, that makes a lot of sense that, you know, um, COVID and accessibility or inaccessibility to uh, to doctors' offices kind of uh, ramped things up quite a bit. Um, and given that uh, I've I've always got my finger on the pulse of what this or that um, national day or month it is, I know that um, Oct September was Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and then October, um, where we are now, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month which are obviously two pretty important um, awareness months out there. So I was wondering if you could tell us um, a little bit more specific about some of how uh, your guys' technologies and tools um, apply to someone receiving a cancer diagnosis. Because I know before we were really talking about um, the, the great value of second opinions. And uh, I think that's one where, whether it's a child or... Um, a middle age or even um, elderly uh, woman, there's, you were saying there's really um, a great value to second opinions at, at any stage of life. Yeah, absolutely. So specifically around cancer, um, we say that, you know, really, if you get a cancer diagnosis, a second opinion should be your first thought, right? Because um, when you get a diagnosis like that, it, oftentimes you know nothing about that diagnosis when you first get it, whether it's for you mm -hmm. or for a child, you're caught completely off guard unless you've known somebody else who has a similar diagnosis. You're out there on Google trying to figure out what the best thing to do, what are the next steps. And so what we've really tried to do is build products that are driven both from patient input as well as physician input. And um, we've gone out and interviewed countless number of patients as well as physicians to, to build out these platforms. Um, and based on that, we've really come up with solutions that are going to create the most seamless po uh, way possible for somebody to get access to expertise. So I'll take you through an example. You know, say you get diagnosed with cancer or your child gets diagnosed with cancer and you're in a rural community and your local community hospital doctor doesn't necessarily have expertise in that field. He's giving mm -hmm. you a diagnosis, but it may or may not be what is um, the most clinically appropriate from what new recent technology advancements have happened, what clinical trials might be out there. Um, so what, what our goal is, is to connect you to the expert in the world on what your condition is typically. And so what for instance, our program will allow you to do is, you know, you get that cancer diagnosis, we can connect you to an expert at Memorial Sloan Kettering, who might be doing things much differently than your local treating physician, or for your child, we can connect you into Cincinnati Children's Hospital or Nationwide Children's Hospital, um, or others, and really get you access to the people who are writing the standard of care rather than the hospitals, they're trying to follow it. Um, and we find there's a lot of value to that second opinion, um, Mayo Clinic came out with a report that said basically 88% of the second opinions that they see have a revised or changed diagnosis or treatment plan. Wow. That's just Jeez. a huge number, right? So yeah. almost nine out of 10, something is going to be different when you talk to an expert. Wow. So whenever you get a rare or complex diagnosis, we just say, get a second opinion, ask somebody else. The two sets of eyes are better than one, right? Especially if that second set of eyes is an expert. So um, we've got material on our website um, that's patient focused, things that we, if you get diagnosed with cancer, we put a blog out recently that was informed by interviews with 40 to 50 cancer patients of the things that they said, here are things that during our cancer journey were very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to getting a second opinion, it's things like, 
you know, has your case been seen by a multidisciplinary board at the hospital? So you're getting people cross departments. Sometimes that's called a tumor board. Um, have you asked what types of research or clinical trials are available? What are the cutting edge treatments and technologies? Um, what access to support groups can you find? Things, things of this nature, and, and, and the list goes on. And ultimately, you know, it, it comes also down to making sure you're aligned with doctors who have your goals in mind as well, your health care goals. Mm -hmm. We like to say we try to improve medical outcomes, but that medical outcome, you know, in some cases you might end up with a terminal diagnosis and the medical outcome improvement might be quality of life, right? It right. might be uh, rather than extending life, but we're looking at ways to really provide those patients hope and, and an ability to, um, really understand what their goals are, what the family's goals are, and then come up with solutions that meet their needs. So the, the, the great thing about the remote second opinion plan is you can get access to physicians on the other side of the country or other side of the world without leaving your home. Um, we're different than your typical cell, your typical telehealth where, you know, you get a rash on your arm and you hold it up. Hey doc, what's this? Uh, you know, we're not the synchronous telehealth that you see via video. We are typically what's known as asynchronous telehealth. We're going to aggregate your prior medical record. We're going to bring in all those medical images. If you have pathology reports, if you have all these other things, we're going to help you aggregate all that into our system. And then the doctor is going to be able to review all of those records digitally and remotely, and then be able to provide a review back to you. And when you get that report, you're able to do really one of two things. You're able to say, hey, I'm able now to take this expert review and bring this to my local treating physician and maybe implement this treatment plan locally. And we've seen that happen mm -hmm. countless times where we're working with those local facilities. Or on the flip side, you might find out, hey, this facility that I'm getting the second opinion from is doing things differently. And I'm gonna go travel for care there. And we provide um, connections so that you can actually uh, travel and receive care at that location if that's what you decide or some hybrid, you know, we had a case recently where um, an individual was diagnosed with cancer, they submitted for a second opinion, and they said, hey, you can do the chemo and the radiation locally, because those are things that are going to be standard. But once it gets time for the surgery, we're best in the world at this, you should travel for the surgery. And so it was a collaboration between the hospitals. So we don't intend to ever cut out the local hospital, we know that at the end of the day, they're going to go back to that hospital and need to get care locally at some point as they continue on. So we work to find the optimal solution for all parties involved. That's awesome. And this is a little a little follow up um, coming from somewhat of a place of ignorance, but I would think in, in some, um, probably not all, but some, if not many cases, health insurance will, you know, probably cover a good portion of that second opinion pursuit, right? Yeah, it, it depends on the insurance, you know, some, and it depends on where health uh, regulations have gone on a state by state basis mm -hmm. on what's adopted and what's not. Um, there are pieces such as, you know, the, if they need to get a digital pathology or, or um, radiology review that typically end up being covered. Sometimes uh, the second opinion itself ends up being an out of pocket expense, but there's usually financial aid programs and things that are associated with that. We we have a partner organization here actually in Anne Arundel County as well called the Mike Shane Memorial Fund. That's oh, a nonprofit wow. that we helped uh, organize and, and we collaborate with. Um, he, Mike Shane was a dear friend of Purviews and um, he passed away from a cancer condition called cholangiocarcinoma. And when he passed mm -hmm. away, we, we, we founded this nonprofit that's kind of a sister organization to Purview that provides funding for people who have cancer diagnoses to get second opinions. Oh, so wow. there's, there's lots. Of, and so in cases where insurance doesn't cover it, there are organizations like this that are out there that are doing great things um, that can partner and team up as well. That's awesome. That's great. That is great. What you guys do is so um, one important, but is also very uh, virtual, very, you can uh, do it from anywhere, you know, and, 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 you know, all those things. So what makes Anne Arundel County the place where you guys, you know, kind of set, set your place? Sure. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think that's a great question. Well, it started, like I said, in the early days, we had some local businesses. I think you have 
a lot of great um, healthcare technology companies around here, a lot of talent that um, in the in the early days of Purview, that was where we were acquiring a lot of talent and where ultimately the ideas even came out of some of these imaging centers, like I mentioned. Um, and then as we as we went, we found, hey, this is actually a great place to hire ha hire people to have them move to Anne Arundel, be Anne Arundel County because you've got the water, you've got you know sailboats, and so some of the things we do here at Purview in the county, we actually uh, have a Purview sailing team. And so oh, wow. every Jeez. every Wednesday night during sailing season on Round Bay, we go out and do sailboat races with the team, um, which that's is awesome. which is pretty cool. So so uh, that's that's one. We also do an annual outing to Cantlers, so uh, the 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 local um, restaurant. And so we we get the whole team together um, on some boats and we drive down to Cantlers. We, we eat some crabs, have a good time. Uh, we usually do that at the end of the end of the year. Um, for our summer interns so toward the end of the summer when we have our summer interns and so it's it's a really nice thing to to offer up and we found uh you know some of those things locally just saying hey Anne Arundel County is a great place to live Anne Arundel County is a great place to work and then as we've transitioned into um into this remote uh digital world mm -hmm. um you know we've we've also found you know, and you know, a little plug for Anne Arundel Count or Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation. You guys have been great to work with. I mean, you've provided us assistance for workforce training grants, things that have helped us train our workforce and security and compliance and different things like that. You also helped uh, during COVID nineteen. I know I, I speak on behalf of of our company, but probably on behalf of many others that you helped with COVID nineteen grants for many small and growing businesses. So we appreciate that. You've also connected us to things like the Export MD grant with Maryland Department of Commerce and ultimately oh, yeah. Maryland's uh, COVID-19 business grants as well. So we've taken full advantage of your services and have found that um, it's really, you know, th there's a vested interest that you have in, in our company growing. And we we feel that and we felt always that, that you guys have, uh, have have had our back in this process. And so we know it was a challenging time for a lot of businesses, but we really can't speak enough of local um, local initiatives like yours that have that have helped small businesses. Well, that's that's awesome to hear. All all yeah. great stuff. What makes uh, Anne Arundel County a great place to to do business and be based and and grow. So, um, speaking of that, with with that in mind, as we somewhat come out of uh, the last two years, which was somewhat of a COVID blur, I guess. <laughs> um, as you were saying before, it's. Uh, been good in terms of for you guys kind of changing that mentality to um, remote, you know, telehealth um, and and remote medical records. Um, so in terms of, you know, your workforce and, um, you know, largely being remote, uh, what do you have planned for, you know, the next whatever uh, year or five years or What's ahead for Purview that we can look forward to? Yeah, so so we're growing. We're definitely growing, and in some interesting areas. You know, we have uh, we found so in the healthcare world in general, there's uh, what's being called a critical workforce shortage when it comes to uh, frontline employees, specifically administrators and um, LPNs and some mm -hmm. other positions. That what we've found is with our remote second opinion program over the years we've actually um, ended up having demand for us uh, as purview handling some of the administration of the remote second opinion programs. So we'll stand uh -huh. up a program at a hospital. And now those facilities are saying, um, you know, we, we might be challenged with some of our staffing. Can you handle things like record records, aggregation and patient intake? And so um, we're hiring on, on, on that vein so that our customers don't have to, right? And so right. we're able to come in and they want, you know, these customers want to stand up a remote second opinion program, but they don't want to have to hire additional administrators because they're having a lot of trouble doing it. We can hire them and allow them to work remotely. Uh, whereas a lot of the hospitals are, you know, requiring or, or needing them to be in person. So it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice opportunity. We're finding a lot of draw. So we've, we've actually brought a bunch of people on board on that side. We brought people on board, the, the technical service, the developers, customer support, uh, all of those sales, all of those types of roles are definitely roles that we, we continue to hire and we continue to grow. Um, so yeah, we, we've, got, we've got big plans and we see, you know, we have a deep pipeline of people that are looking for this solution now 
Um, and and we're we're excited about what's coming. And so we've we've got uh, we've got a lot of um, a lot of big things I think on the horizon in the next year or two, as you ask. Great. That's great. That's awesome. Awesome. Awesome stuff to hear. Hey, I just want to, uh, we, we got a part of our podcast where we, we kind of get into the, the things that you like to do in Anne Arundel County. You've mm-hmm. already stated, uh, you know, everything that you guys do to kind of like let your hair down, hang out and stuff, but you personally, what are your top five things, places to, uh, to do, eat, shop you know what what, what's your downtime look like yeah absolutely so i I have a wife and two kids here they're uh ages six and four um and they they love doing outdoor stuff and so my wife is is a saint and during the pandemic she took them and has been homeschooling them uh during this whole process she was a early education teacher before all this and so we kind of lucked out we had we had a built-in teacher right here but she does all, so much outdoor. She could give you a list of 100 different parks and places she's been to. But some of the ones off the top of my head, I know um, we're close to Broadneck Park. We love Broadneck Park, Truxton, Quiet Waters Parks, some of those parks. Uh, just Anne Arundel Park System in general has been really great for us. We do a lot of kayaking as well. So we will kayak down on Deep Creek or other places. Nice. Um, so we do a lot outdoors. Um, and then you know, as far as places to go, places to eat, uh, we're big fans of uh, lemongrass and uh, Spazico's Pizza here in uh, Cape St. Clair. Um, let me think the uh, the Amish market is always a big winner. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. A personal pretzel. favorite of you mine, know, too. Can't, can't beat the can't beat the pretzels there. Yeah. Um, Bean Rush is probably a, a, a good coffee shop that we like going to. And uh, the kids would put in a vote probably for Annapolis Ice Cream Company. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're, so we're think... uh, we've worked with Annapolis Ice Cream quite a bit and um, yeah. they're they're another company that's quickly growing in the county. Oh, sure. um, so we're, we're happy to hear that too. Yeah. So, yeah. So lot, lots of, lots of good, good things and places to see. Cool. Cool. And uh, for my, for my top five, um, you can give more or more or less if you'd like, it's just some, um, some of your top pieces of advice for uh, other um business owners or aspiring business owners out there, whether it's, you know, a tech company COO like yourself or just uh, just uh, someone who's just starting out. Yeah, sure. So um, so lots of directions we could go on that probably could spend an hour just on that topic. Yep. But um, I'll, I'll start with one that I think is uh, is near and dear to us here at Purview. I, I once had a CEO that said you shouldn't ever try to design something unless you've talked to 100 people who have the problem. And I thought that was just a, a beautiful piece of, of knowledge and uh, experience because, um, you know, if you, if you just, oftentimes we, you know, we sit back and we try and come up with solutions without ever talking to the people who are actually experiencing the issue. So um, I'd say in, in that case, go to where the action is, try it is, was, was kind of another thing he always used to say, which is uh, to say, get out there, talk to people who are experiencing the problem. So before we started coming up with the solution for this remote second opinion product, like I said, I personally interviewed between 40 and 50 cancer patients to try and understand their journey and try and understand all the pitfalls. And while that's not like a completely representative sample, the more of those opinions you start getting in your mind, the more things you start to see that you would have never even heard about, like, oh, wow, there are lots of challenges around travel or, oh, I, yeah. I didn't think this thing would be covered or that thing wouldn't be covered or how big of a, how big of a role something like hope actually plays when you get a terminal diagnosis. Mm. And so, you know, you might have the best doctor in the world, but if he's, if, if he or she is not um, giving you what you need from a care and feeding and mental health standpoint, that might ultimately not be the best place for you to go. So, so we've done a lot to really listen to the customer Um, both the patients. And then we really spent a lot, a lot of time listening to physicians because one thing that's out there, uh, you know, pretty much every physician um, hates their EHR system. They they don't like their electronic health record system because it's so, um, it's just so cumbersome with so much data that you can't ever pull out what's most relevant. And so what we really tried to do is create a platform that only showed the doctors what they needed to see. So if you've got a cancer patient you know, who's in their fifties, you don't need to see that they broke their ankle when they were 15. It's not relevant to this diagnosis, but it was getting equal weight in a lot of these EHR systems and Mm. things. So we've 
created methods that pull that stuff out and um, have built ways to, um, through some intelligent um, filtering and, and machine learning and things, built out ways to to pull in and identify record types. And so all those based on ease of use, because what we found is, hey, for patients at this time, ease of use is what's important. There's so uh, so many things running through your head when you get a cancer diagnosis, yeah. right? So you, the last thing you want to figure, the last thing you want is then to figure out, well, now how do I navigate another piece of software, right? Like yeah. that's not even on your on your radar. So so we really focused on those things. So I'd say that's that's probably one big piece. And if I could hit one more, um, at this time specifically, in this world that we're in with uh, the shift to remote work, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people have been having you know, just so much on their plates for the last few years. And just say, just take a real interest in your employees, like take a mm -hmm. heartfelt, not from a, not from a, what am I going to get out of it standpoint, sure. but from a, like actually care about the people you work with because you're spending, you know, more time with them than probably your family in most cases. So yeah. get to know them, learn what's important to them, learn what makes them tick and really show your employees that you're invested in their future. Um, and so one thing, one little thing that we did this year to try and show that is we created a program that we called Invest in You. And we set aside a pool of money that basically allows every employee to put a certain amount of money toward their personal education and a certain amount of money toward um, their health. And we don't, we're very loose on what gets included in that, but education from a very broad standpoint. So we've had people apply for scuba lessons, for mm -hmm. language, you know, teaching second language. Uh, guitar lessons. Um, and from the health side, we've paid for ski passes, gym memberships, soccer leagues, awesome. things, because we really think that it's important, you know, to, to be invested in the interests of where your employees are, whether that's work, you know, some people have went out and got, you know, AWS web certifications and things right. too, very, mm -hmm. very focused. Um, and that's where your workforce training stuff has come in too, when you guys have helped mm -hmm. us with some of those things. Um, but some of these other things are just really just for mental health and for continued learning and growth. And, and it's done, it's done a world of good to show your employees, Hey, we, we care about you. So I just, you know, start with those two things It really, it comes down to listening both to your employees as well as your customers, and then actually digesting that information and turning it into something usable. Those are great. Those are really great. Yeah. yeah. And I guess just, uh, to, to close things up here, um, I know you guys have a pretty great website with plenty of case studies and uh, more information on what you guys offer. You've got that um, links to some of those recent webinars that you've hosted. So if you could just tell everyone out there, um, again, remind them of your website and then also where to follow you on social media. Sure, absolutely. So if you're if you're a patient out there and you've had a rare or complex diagnosis, there's a lot of information on our website. Um, you know, th there are blogs out there, uh, such as one I was referencing today, which is you know called Eight Things to Consider After Receiving a Cancer Diagnosis. Uh, we've got stuff out there. And like we said, you know, if you if you think that a second opinion might be something you're interested in, get in touch with us. Um, you can email us either at success at purview.net um, or you can uh, get in touch with us right from the contact us page on our website, which is just purview.net. Right on our site, there's things, um, there's there's blogs, there's webinars, there's things you can find there. If you're a if you're a healthcare facility and you're thinking that that running a second opinion program might be something of interest to you, or um, this other world where we've actually seen a lot of these facilities start using um, our platform for what what's known as a digital front door, so they actually will take and um, leverage our platform for the purpose of reviewing cases for pre-surgical screening, pre-administration. So these are times where you know that somebody might is, is considering your facility already, but you need to review medical records so they're not coming to you via email and text message and every other method. We can, we can navigate that as well. So whether it's a digital front door or full remote second opinion program, um, you can get in touch with us straight off our website again through contact us, or you can follow us on uh, LinkedIn. It's probably the best place. LinkedIn.com uh, slash company slash purview is, is where we are right on LinkedIn. And as Steve, Steve mentioned earlier, we, we had a recent webinar, which was uh, uh, with four of the top 10 children's hospitals talking about their digital health strategies. 
and that would be another place that I would direct people to 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 watch that webinar. It had some some great uh and very interesting feedback from Texas Children's, Cincinnati Children's, uh, nationwide, and UPMC. So awesome. uh, I would I would direct you to those places uh, if you were looking for more information. Yep, and we'll um we'll be sure uh when this when this publishes and goes out there to um include a link and highlight a link to that uh, recent webinar as well. And speaking of that, just to remind everyone out there, um, you can watch this podcast, um, past podcasts, and future podcasts on both Facebook and YouTube um, at our AAEDC channels. And you can listen to them uh, wherever you get your pod. That's, you know, Apple, Spotify, um, what have you. And uh, last but not least, please sure, please be sure to follow us on all of our social channels. That's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, not just for uh, podcast publications, but um, constant news about ribbon cuttings and anything and everything going on uh, with economic development in Anne Arundel County. So again, Josh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, we will definitely keep in touch. Very good. Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate it today. Yeah. I appreciate all the hard work you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thanks. Our pleasure. Likewise. Thanks.